In this part two of fog types, I will discuss the final three types of fog, upslope fog, rain-induced fog, and steam fog. There are two ways that upslope fog can form. The first way is that moist, stable surface air moves up sloping terrain. Surface wind of 5 to 15 knots or about 5 to 20 miles per hour is favorable. It can also form when air cools to saturation by expansion. Mixing increases the depth of the cooling, creating a deeper fog layer. Upslope fog is persistent, covers a wide area, can form under cloudy skies, and obscures hills and mountains. It will dissipate when surface winds cease or change direction. It will also dissipate when downslope winds develop. Another type of fog is rain-induced fog. This occurs when warm rain falls through colder, unsaturated air. Water vapor content increases due to evaporation of raindrops. Air is then cooled to saturation by latent heat of evaporation. This process can produce either low clouds or fog. Fog occurs when the winds are 15 knots or less, and low clouds are produced when wind speeds are greater than 15 knots due to turbulent mixing. Rain-induced fog is persistent, covers a wide area, and mostly occurs with warm fronts or stationary fronts. The fog forms on the cold air side of the front. Fog formation stops when the precipitation stops, however, fog and low clouds often continue. Steam fog occurs when cold air moves over warm water. Evaporation increases the dew point temperature. Shallow convection then results from conduction heating. There is a shallow layer of absolute instability. This is the only fog type that is the result of unstable air. Air cools to expansion by saturation. Steam fog is persistent, can be widespread, and there is low-level convection present. The convection is usually weak, though. The larger the body of water, the more persistent and widespread the fog will be. It is commonly seen in the Great Lakes, but can be seen on any lake, and it forms during the fall. Formation ends when surface winds cease or change direction, or when the colder ground warms on the windward side of the water.